Welcome. This is the fourth Sunday in our series on how to discern how God is speaking to us. We've talked about some other things, but this week what we're going to talk about is why discerning God's voice, whether it is in Scripture or that still small voice of the Holy Spirit, is best done by consulting also with other people. So let's go to worship. Welcome to worship here at First Congregational Church of Bakersfield. I'm Pastor Elizabeth. We are on the fourth Sunday of our series on discernment and discerning God's word to us, understanding how God speaks to us. As always, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. On that great and wonderful day when we get to be back in the building, you are very welcome to come and join us. In the meantime, wherever you are watching this service, you are indeed still welcome to be part of our celebration. And a special comment to those of you in California with the forest fires, or the various fires that are raging around us, please keep safe. Welcome to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. God, we live in a society that too often encourages us to think only of ourselves. Individualism is an ideal, and the self-made individual is held up as a model. But we often forget that those who have done well have been guided by mentors, and all of us do better when we learn from those who've gone before us. In our individual journeys of faith, we too learn from our brothers and sisters who have struggled with doubt, who have faced moral challenges, who have fallen and been restored. And when we are willing to share our own faith journey, it can help and inspire others. So as we listen to your word today, may we remember we are not made to take this journey of life alone. Indeed, in your triune nature, often described as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, you are yourself a model of community. Thank you. 
We come now to our time of intercessory prayer. And as I'm praying here, please join in prayer for your own community and whatever part of the world you are concerned about, or even the whole world. Let us bow together in prayer. God, as I stand here praying, we have our second political convention going on. And just as I prayed last week that the conventions be held in peace, I pray that again. And that going forward from these two conventions, that the main feel of our election, that this time be a time of peace. Disagreement, but disagreement with respect rather than attack. God, we also know that this is a time of great hurt in many places throughout the world. Here in California, we pray for the responders who are dealing with over 600 fires, started mostly by dry lightning. We pray for those who have lost homes, who have been evacuated, who are worried about homes, who may have lost one of the people who have died, or may be worried about the health of friends. God bless all who are dealing with the fire and help them know there is a better tomorrow. We pray for those who have lost friends and loved ones in the pandemic or who fight serious illness of any kind themselves. Grant your healing mercies to all. We pray for students and teachers and administrators and all involved in reopening schools, from preschools all the way through colleges. It is difficult to make all of the decisions to know where it is best to be for individual students. And so we ask your wisdom for those who have to make those difficult decisions. We pray for people throughout the world who are dealing with other things. For those in the Gulf as two hurricanes are rapidly approaching. Keep everybody safe. For those in other parts of the world facing natural disasters. For those dealing with political upheavals. For those dealing with family tragedies. For anyone dealing with any of the hurts that come to us as human beings. And God, we ask that you help us to remember that your call to us is not simply to find comfort in you, but to give comfort and help and support wherever we can to others. God bless this, your world. May we watch over it, and may we watch over each other. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.
scripture reading for today is Romans 12, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. And from Proverbs verse 12, chapter 12, verse 15. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to advice. Please join me as I say the prayer I always say before I preach. God, may the words of my mouth this morning and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day and all days. Great God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this is our fourth Sunday on discerning how God is speaking to us. A quick review for some of you who may not have tuned in earlier. We started by emphasizing the importance of scripture because scripture is our touchstone. If we are, since we are being called to something that is totally anti-scripture, it's not God's voice calling us. The next week we talked about Mary and Martha and why it is important to put aside the busyness of our lives and take quiet time to pay attention to God. Last week, we listened to the story of Elijah encountering God on the mountain. And we were reminded that God does not always speak to us in drama, nor does God always speak to us in ways that we expect. And so we have to be willing to listen and learn to hear when the Holy Spirit speaks to us in silent, calm, quiet ways. Today I want to talk about the importance of consulting others, of knowing that it isn't discerning God's voice is not something given to us as individuals, but given to us as a community. And I want to begin by talking a little bit about Christian community. I'm an interim pastor and I have worked with more than a dozen congregations. One of the things I have found is every single congregation I've ever worked with, as pastor or as a consultant, will describe themselves as a warm, caring community. And they are, at least with their friends they already know. But oftentimes, being human, we get so comfortable that on a Sunday morning, we are busy catching up with our friends. And we miss the newcomer or the visitor. We do that also when maybe we need four people to do a task in the church and someone will say, I'll take care of it. I can call Mary and George and maybe Sue Ellen and the four of us can do it. I know everybody. Of course, what is missed is the newcomer off to the side who would like to participate also. There's another problem I have seen in many churches. I have seen many good, caring Christians who will do whatever they can and go out of their way to help somebody 
in need or who needs to talk or wants comfort or whatever it is. But they've never quite understood that being a community means the relationship is reciprocal. We take care of each other. And so if they themselves are hurting or in need of something, they won't turn to the community. As the old word would imply, they don't want to be beholden. They don't want to feel somehow less independent. But Christian community is a place where we share and take care and help each other. And we need each other because the real truth is no one person knows it all. We do not all understand God the same way and it takes all those different perspectives to get a bigger picture of God. We don't understand what God is doing in the world. We don't understand who God is or what God is calling us as individuals to be. On our own, we don't even fully understand what this world would be like if each of us as individuals lived as the person we were created to be. So we need each other. The image I sometimes have in my mind to explain this is, it is as if we are standing in a dark room, pitch dark. And we're pretty sure we're standing in front of a beautiful stained glass window, but we can't really see it. And so we pull out a flashlight and start to shine it on the window. And oh, here I can see, oh, that's a beautiful piece of blue glass. And over here, that's wonderful red. I wish I could see the whole picture. And that's that rarity, a true deep purple. But when the community comes together and everyone shares and shines their light on the same window, we still don't get to see the whole thing. As Paul said, now we see in a glass darkly. Then we will see face to face. We don't see the whole thing, but we get a much bigger understanding of what that window is about. That only happens if we share with one another. So as part of the Christian community, when we are just trying to decide, trying to discern what God is saying to us, either as individuals or as a community, we need to consult with one another. And that means we need to not only listen to somebody else, we need to be willing to share our own faith journey, our own experiences of faith, our own experiences of how God may have nudged us or shaped us, even if it's something we only understood later. Because as we understand and share each other's experiences, we understand God much bigger, much more broadly than we ever can on our own. And if that doesn't explain why, when we are trying, when you are trying to discern how God is speaking to you, how you need to also seek out others and check that. I can assure you I've done it. I did it even coming here to First Bakersfield. I was working with a church that was in the process of calling a new pastor. And yet this felt right. Usually an interim doesn't leave until the new pastor has arrived. But I'd been there a long time. So before I said I would come, I consulted with three people. The denominational liaison to the pastor search committee who said, they're getting close. Yeah, I think you're supposed to go. One of my interim colleagues, a mentor, who said, it's okay to leave at this point. You've done your work. And a denominational official who said the same thing. Actually, his comment was, I had been there long enough, they needed an interim for their interim. We need to consult with one another. Because if everything's right, it feels good to hear someone say, 
I think that is what God is telling you to do. And when we're wrong, and there are times we're wrong, it is equally important to hear somebody say, I think you're off on the wrong track. It is better than going forward in something that will be disastrous. So consult with one another. And if you need more reminders of why, remember the verse from Proverbs that was read this morning. The fool thinks their way is right, but the wise seek and consider advice. Amen. Let's join now in prayers of thanksgiving. God, we give you thanks for community. Real community where we are free both to share what we have in gifts and graces and to receive the gifts and graces of other people. Where we can give advice and receive advice. Where we can share our strengths and our weaknesses and be accepted the whole time. We give you thanks for your churches who, even as some have been closed to their buildings, have nonetheless in different ways remained open for their community. For those who are reaching out, doing whatever they can. We give you thanks for those who help distribute food when so many people are in need, and for those who contribute food, as our own and many other food banks find it difficult sometimes to have any food at all to give. We give you thanks for the love you have given to us, 
the wisdom that Jesus shares with us and the closeness that we are allowed to have with you. And we give you thanks for another day, another day where we can enjoy one another's companionship, or maybe if we are among the lonely where we can hope to find somebody new to speak to. God, for all the gifts you have given and shared with us, that you give to us so that we can share them with others, we celebrate and we praise you and ask you to continue to watch over us and guide us through these very confusing times. In Christ's name, amen. As we come to the end of our worship service, let us remember that God did not create us to do everything alone. We are created to live and to thrive in community with one another. And so the blessing comes not to us alone, but comes to all of us, especially when we share blessing with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.